Our uh, first speaker learned two very important life skills during her PhD program, how to drive a stick shift and how to siphon gas with a hose. I'm a little worried about that one. Please, everyone, please welcome Shirley. So today uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about writing and updating reports in Quarto. So uh, my name is Shirley Han. I'm an assistant director at the Science and Technology Policy Institute. If you went to the workshop yesterday, my colleague Will Doan uh, spoke there and he has another presentation tomorrow as well. Um, all right, so let's just jump in. So just a quick um, poll. How many, how many individuals here have heard of Quarto? Okay, great. Um, well, I'm not sure how helpful this talk will be, but <laughs> for those who might be new, um, I'm hoping to introduce a new tool for you and a new way of thinking about how to facilitate report writing or any kind of documents um, for, for your work. Okay, so a few things to know about Cordo. It is the next generation of R Markdown. So how many individuals have worked with R Markdown before? Okay, that's fantastic. So if you're already working with R Markdown and you haven't switched over to Cordo, this might be the next logical best thing, um, just because a lot of the features are there to make things um, a little bit more user-friendly and, um, and it's pretty. <laughs> okay, so first things first, um, we can create reproducible documents uh, in Cordo for a variety of different um, formats. So including HTML, PDFs, um, Word docs, and you can also do things like presentations and books and blogs and websites and so forth. So you don't have to use Cordo just for uh, documents. You can use it for a variety of other um, presentations and formats as well. And for this particular talk, I'm going to be speaking about how we can use Cordo um, for recurring documents. So things that you're going to be doing either over and over again or on an annual basis, something where you don't wanna to have to manually update um, because if you have done that before, you know it is such a huge um, pain, I would say, um, and it's, it's, it's quite time consuming. All right, so a few things to introduce you uh, to about Cordo if you haven't seen it before. Uh, there's actually two interfaces. So let's see if this works. Can you see my, I do not. Let's see if I have a pointer. I'm not really sure I do. Okay. Um, so first things first is it is a .qmd uh, file extension. So if you're already working in R Markdown or R, um, you can actually just change the file extension to .qmd and it will automatically convert it to a quarter document. So pretty easy things there. Um, and you can just do that manually. There's actually two interfaces in Quarto. One on the source side, which is what's presented here. Um, you use Markdown syntax, you write how you normally would, you put your inline codes there, your chunks and so forth. Um, and this probably looks pretty standard for anybody who has worked with Markdown. For those who haven't and would like to still jump into Quarto, there's a visual editor. So this is um, much more user-friendly. If you want to begin and you're not quite sure how to make things in italics or bold or put in a header um, or how to insert a figure properly um, using code, you can go to the visual editor and you can start there. You can see that there are some in the red highlighted boxes. You have formatting options for bold, italics, um, hyperlinks. You can choose the heading style that you want. You can insert bullets, different types of bullets and numbers and lists and so forth. You can also look at the insert uh, tab and you have many options for tables and figures. So if you have something that you want to go ahead and put in, you can go through here and drag and select um, your the things that you want to add into your document or report. So um, much easier for people who might be new uh, to Cordo or to Markdown, you can learn from here and you can go back and forth between the visual and the source editor to see what the code that Cordo put in um, for you looks like. So you can learn both ways. Okay, so today I'm actually gonna use one of the evaluations that uh, we did for an example on how Cordo can be used to help us facilitate this report writing. So um, Stippy, my organization was asked to do an evaluation of the National Institutes of Health um, Transformative Research Award anonymized review process. So there's a lot of acronyms there. <laughs> Uh, so this is a uh, something that's been happening since 2009, 
and they wanted to change up the grant review process. So in the regular grant review process, the individuals, your institutions, your collaborators, are all of that information is made public to the reviewers themselves so that they can assess um, both you as a PI as well as the proposal that you are um, you're proposing here. They decided to try and see if an anonymized review process in which all of those informations are withheld from the reviewers might be a more fair and unbiased way to do the grant review um, and hopefully lead to increases in both applicant as well as uh, awardee diversity. So Stippy, we were uh, asked to do this during the first year of the implementation in FY 2021. The report is um, just made public. Um, Earlier on this year, we provided the second year report um, just to the sponsor a few, uh, few weeks ago, and hopefully that will be up soon as well. Um, but overall, it was a 200 page report. Um, it was very, very data heavy. Uh, most of the report has lots of tables and figures um, and the text is very, um, very heavy. So, and we were contracted to do this once a year for the first three years. So FY21 all the way through FY23. All right, before I kind of jump into why we're gonna use Cordo, aside from the fact that it's a 200 page report that we have to update annually, um, I also want to point out that just like many other reports, right? This uses multiple data sources. Um, the review process on this right-hand figure is actually a three-phase process where each phase has different reviewers. They're asked to assess the application in different, um, different parts of the application. And so what we're gonna say, see here is we conducted a variety of surveys of applicants, of the administrative staff, of different kinds of reviewers for editorial board, as well as technical reviewers, and asked them what their process was for applicants, if they were able to anonymize their application correctly for everybody else, um, were they able to actually review and judge the proposal um, based on an anonymized application? We also have uh, demographic information from administrative records given to us by NIH. So we have lots of data coming in, many different sources, um, and we're trying to provide a cohesive story with all of this. All right. So I'm gonna give one, one two and a half sentence example. So this is the first uh, result um, from our applicant survey. And what we see here is we have, you know, simple things like a response rate. We have 105 of 176 applicants that were listed as a PI, the percent of those, and 22 of the 119 co-applicants uh, completed the survey and some additional information about who responded and, and so forth. Everything that's in a red box will have to be updated for the next year or the year after, right? There's, that's a lot of things in a red box for just two and a half sentences. Um, and before, I think most of us are doing this manually. So we run our analyses, we run our codes, and then somebody, that gracious person on our team, has the task of you go in and you find where all of these places are and you update all of these numbers manually. So that's not great, right? It's um, one, it's a lot of numbers to, uh, to update. It's very easy to make a mistake. You might forget halfway, well, did I update this number? Did I update all of the numbers in this sentence? Um, there's just a lot of chances for error. It's also very time consuming. Again, this was a 200 page report. You're talking about over 50% of this has to be updated every year. And it's also really difficult to maintain internal consistency um, of the document if multiple people are trying to update different parts of the, um, of the report. All right, so what if there is a better way? And there is. So how can you create a reproducible, updatable report? Um, so are you already doing some of these, which I would imagine most of, most of you guys are. Um, you're already doing all of your data cleaning and wrangling in some form of Cordo supported language. For this uh, presentation, I'm using R. Um, you already have your functions for your data analyses and you're already creating tables and figures uh, in R or you already know how to do that. And you are already using R Markdown. The next logical step might be to move on to Cordo. All right, so starting a dark, uh, Quarto document, uh, if you're familiar with this, I'll breeze through a, lot, a little bit of this since most of you have already experienced with our markdown. We have our YAML header, 
um, we can indicate what format we want, and then we use markdown syntax here. Um, in this particular document, I am reading all of my functions on my data, clean data, and so forth, so that it is already uh, ready for use um, for me to call in my report writing. So we're going to use this simple sentence as an example of how to do this in Quarto. Again, a lot of this might look familiar if you're already familiar with Markdown. So here we have the sentence 86 of 128 applicants listed as the contact PI completed the survey. And of these 86 combined responses, uh, 70 were new and 60 were repeat. So what we're going to do in R here is um, we're going to read our survey data in. The survey is formatted in a way such that each respondent is one row of data. We're going to take the uh, number of rows for that data frame that we have. The answer would be 86 in R. And then we're actually going to turn this into words. Um, I was very, very happy to find that there were things already out there that was doing this. So we're going to use the English package um, and the English function to take that 86, that numeric number, uh, and turn it into words. It is actually still a numeric number, <laughs> even after you use the English function. That is why we also have to turn it into um, characters. And then we're going to capitalize that first one to get 86. So lots of ways to make sure that we can implement all of this so that we don't have to write anything out or manually update. All right, so not everything we are calculating, right? Some things we need to hard code in because those are just the parameters for those years. So in this instance, we have a total of 128 applicants. We didn't know that from the survey. That was just the number that was given to us from the sponsors. Uh, we're hard coding that in as the total number of applicants. We also have to update the years of the reports. So we're in this particular example, we're using FY22 and the previous year as referring to the uh, FY2021. So looking at uh, the second red box here, the percent of respondents to this survey, we would do our normal calculations in R with the number of survey responses over the total applicants. We would get something like 0.672, right, in R output, and then we would um, we can use paste and and pretty it up um, for the actual report writing. Put in the parentheses. Um, Simplify it to one decimal place, put in the uh, percentage signs, and so forth. All right, other simple calculations. So all of this should be pretty easy. You probably already have all of this information as you're writing your data analysis anyways. Um, now we're just kind of putting in together, uh, linking things together so that you can insert them into the report where you need them to. So here we have the number of new um, applicants, and that's just going to be the number of survey responses minus the number of repeat applicants, where repeat applicants was uh, a subset of individuals who answered a particular way for a survey question. And then the number of repeat applicants is just uh, the number of rows there. All right, so what does this look like in actual Quarto? Um, so first we can put in the headers. So things match the way that we want them to. Two for results, um, a subheader for response rate. And you can see that these are, we have the inline R codes that are the exact same as what I had presented in the previous slides. But uh, this will generate exactly this, um, these two sentences. So it looks like quite a lot of gobbledygook <laughs> if you're looking at the portal part itself. But I think most of us already have a lot of this uh, coded into our data analysis, right? It's just putting it into inline um, codes so that it is next to the words that you already have or that you want to use. All right. A few other special things uh, to point out. Again, some of these already exist in our markdown. Quarto makes it a slightly easier because it also now allows for cross-referencing. Um, so adding footnotes. So in this particular instance, we have uh, referencing a webinar that NIH hosted to answer questions from applicants. And we want to put in a footnote where that uh, webinar is available for hyperlink. Um, so using, uh, using the format of um, of how to put in a footnote there. Uh, also to put in figure captions. So down at the bottom, we see we have our figure caption, the location of the figure itself in a 
in a folder I called images. And then the last little bit there, um, that entire thing in curly brackets, um, the hashtag figure for noting that it is actually a figure. And the last little bit web program officer, what we have there is the ID tag for that particular figure so that you can reference it in your report anytime that you need to, which is what you see up here um, when you say at fig, again, referencing that you're talking about a figure that you just created um, and which figure you're talking about. And the nice thing to know about this is um, notice that your figure actually comes after your cross-referencing. So it doesn't have to occur in a, yeah, it doesn't have to occur before um, when you actually cross-reference it in a report. All right, so this is what it looks like. Uh, we have our footnote automatically show up there. It will automatically number. Um, itself in the sequential order, so you don't have to worry about that. Same with your figures as well as tables, it will sequentially order itself. And then we can also see that uh, the cross reference shows up um, and it's also hyperlinked so that it can automatically take you to the figure or table that you're referring to. And lastly, uh, for footnotes, even though it's not shown on this slide, it will show up at whatever format that you're working with. So at the end of an HTML page or the bottom of a Word or PDF page. So it is already uh, formatted for all of those. Okay, and so um, that was a lot, but I think a lot of it probably already looks familiar. Um, so when does writing a report in Quarto make sense? Um, I have an example here of the NSF Science and Engineering uh, Indicators reports. You can see here that it's a, it's a biannual report every two years. Something like this would be the perfect example of when you want to use something like Quarto to reproduce your documents, right? You are um, working with data that are pretty much the same. Your data structures are getting read the same way. Um, it's the same type of data that you're working with. It's just being updated. Um, your report is not that one-time report. Again, this example here is a four-time uh, report since 2012. And you find yourself using a lot of the same text that you've already used in your previous documents. If you're copying and pasting a lot, there's a better way to do things. Um, so if, you, if you're finding yourself going in and manually updating things like tables and figures um, and those types of things, it might be better to put the upfront time uh, in the beginning and go ahead and take the codes that you've already written and put it into Quarto so that all you have to do at the end is click render and then you have your document um, out in front of you. And the other time that you might be interested in using this is not only if you have a complete document that you're ready to, uh, to make or create, but let's say you are working with data that are being collected and your deadline, unfortunately, is super, super close to when your data is being done collected and you want to have some semblance of a report um, by that time. So as your data uh, is still being collected or finalized, you can go ahead and do some of these things, right? Um, you know probably the type of text that you want to put in and you know where that information is going to come from. You can go ahead and create a document um, and, and run whatever data that you have so that when you have your final clean data, you can go ahead and hit that render and have a pretty much finalized document or report at the tip of your hands. Okay, and with that, I think I will stop. Um, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to find me or uh, email me at my email address. And I hope it, this um, helps you think about whether you're able to do anything uh, in Cordo to facilitate your workload. Thank you.